the Haven Homestead Podcast. Let's learn and grow together on a way to sustainable life. Sustainable. Sustainable life. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Here we are on episode 38. Thanks, Liam, for that nice intro. Liam is five years old now. <laughs> huh, Liam? Five and a half. Yeah. So here we are in episode 38, and we're going to be talking about elements of a successful homestead. And we have Emma here and Liam with us, and they're going to add their thoughts on the elements of a successful homestead from our homestead, things that they've learned. Does that sound good, guys? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, before we get into the main topic, please uh, visit us at havenhomestead.com. And I just signed up for Twitter at, uh, I think it's Haven Homestead, Haven Homestead, and then on uh, Instagram as The Haven Homestead. So if you have Twitter or Instagram, uh, I would appreciate the follow. That would be awesome. Good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Yes, I know, but when you yell... It makes the sound bars really big, and that's not good because then somebody's listening on their headphones. They could be like, "Ow, my ear hole!" You know what I mean? So don't yell just because it makes the sound bigger. Okay. Uh, at HavenHomestead.com, you can find out about all of our classes that we have coming up. So Emma, what classes are we have coming up? We have up? rabbit classes. That's right, rabbit class on the 18th. We're gonna be teaching about. Raising and processing meat rabbits. That is on the 18th of November. And then uh, that'll be the last class, I think, for this year. I think so. And then we'll have new classes starting in January. Uh Uh-huh. And now a word from our sponsors at Happy Leaf LED. Vic Zatteray and his team at Happy Leaf LED are changing the way growers think about grow lights. Happy Leaf LED is no-joke lighting technology that really works. The lights are affordable, powerful, and efficient. With their Anywhere Anytime garden kits, they'll change the way you think about hydroponics, too. For more information on Happy Leaf LED, go to happyleafled.com. You'll be happy you did. Thank you, Lindsay, for that. And don't forget that they just put on their Anytime Anywhere garden kit... Uh, I believe it's $65, and you get a 4-inch LED light and all the stuff that, uh, you know, you can check it out. they got the the clay pellets, they've got the, the pots for growing in, they've got everything you need but the water in the jars, and maybe if you want to try some different seeds, in that kit. And you can get 10% off by the, using the promo code FRIEND, all caps. Well, let's get into the topic. So we're on episode 38, Elements of a Successful Homestead. And this is, you know, despite your space. So I was looking on the internet of what people thought about Elements of a Successful Homestead. And I was look, and they were saying, you know, you need a wood stove or you need a, a wood lot or, a, you know, these different things that, that... And I understand that some people are trying to homestead where they're at. So the urban homestead, which is a very, uh, I would say, famous homestead in California, Southern California, they don't have room for a a wood lot and, you know, a cow pasture and stuff like that. I mean, they live inside town, so they have to... So these elements that I'm going to be talking about today are areas that anybody can cultivate no matter what their space is is how much how much land they have and emma and liam are going to be telling us about what they think about our homestead and maybe some things one of the things that a successful homestead needs to do is to be able to grow food okay okay what are some of the things that we grow what are some foods that we grow um we this year we are growing a volunteer tomato some peas I don't know if our carrots are laying anymore, but... I think we harvested all the carrots. Yeah, and we have green beans. 
Uh, I think that's it, but we, we had, have... We had cucumbers oh, and potatoes we had and cu- asparagus uh-huh. and squash and salad vegetables. Uh-huh. And we also have raspberries and strawberries. You didn't get many this year. And blackberries. And, uh, and lots of blackberries. That's like every summer. Um, um, we also, this spring, we had a summer squash, acorn squash, pumpkin-shaped squash, and there are lots more squashes that I don't remember. I think those are most of the squashes we had. Mm-hmm. And we had lots and lots of cucumbers, huh? Yes, tons of cucumbers. tons, tons. We don't even know what to do with them. Yeah. Anyway, we have one sum- summer squash. Up. That's left, yep. Uh-huh. That's all we have left. We don't know what to do with it. Liam, is there anything that... Yeah. What are some things that we grow here? Uh, I'm still growing some little bunnies. Yeah, rabbits. We grow some meat. Yep. Uh-huh. And, and, and I still have some some teenagers bunnies also still growing. And, 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 and sometimes... As, as good meat from them. Yep, sometimes we butcher rabbits for meat. Yep, that's right. And chickens, we, too. And we, Yep, we have chickens, and they give us meat eggs. and eggs. You're right. Oh, and they also give us broth for stew. That's right. We can we use the old hens and roosters for broth, huh? We make broth for, with them. Uh, some of the other things, we have trees, right, that have fruit. Yeah, huh? Huh? And they're and they're and 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 they're also good for climbing on. One of them are my relaxing trees. I love it. Yeah, but but not our fruit trees though. You're yeah. talking about yeah. the other trees. Yeah. So fruit trees we have lots of apple trees. We have pears. We have peaches, cherries, plums, quince. Yeah, and and us even have a snow peach. Yep. Yeah, frost, frost peach. Uh huh. And we got one this year. It was so yum. Yeah. Six, last year six, we got several, but this one. year we only got one. Um, but I think we're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on this next year. We'll see. You know, it's getting bigger and, and better, and it's just gonna give us more and more peaches. Yeah. Uh, so growing food is the first element I put on this homestead, and no matter what size. Your homestead. If your homestead is inside an apartment for right now, that's fine. And that is what we talked about last week with the growing a balanced diet. So you can grow vegetables inside your house with things like the Anytime Anywhere Garden. What we have is we have a LED and we've also put the, oh, what is that, roots? Okay. Grow roots. Oh, grow. Uh, back to the roots. Back to the roots, that's it. Back to the roots, grow uh, in a garden in a can. And we have cherry tomatoes. We have... Basil. Basil. Mint. Mint. Um, and we also have mushroom. mushrooms. Oyster. Oh, and we didn't put the mushrooms. We didn't start the oyster mushrooms yet. That's right. Yeah, that's favorite. It's, it's pretty much his favorite vegetable. And mine. All right. So what I was thinking we would do is maybe take one of those kits, the, veg- the mushroom one, and break it up. And then put it into some... Ground? No, some uh, wood chips. Yeah? And then it might make the whole mound of wood chips a... Mushroom. Mushroom Garden. mound, yeah. So. And he's... I bet Dad is going to know what to do with it. Because his favorite vegetables... is mushrooms. Mm-hmm. He Veg- knows what to do. Vegetables, we talked about this. Vegetables are not a mushroom. Oh, they're fungus. That's right. Fungus. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is, they're that's favorite that fungus. That's right. Mushrooms are my favorite fungus. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are too silly sometimes. Okay, so another thing that that is I think important for a homestead is you don't have to have a lot of land for any of these things. Another one is education. It's a place to learn, right? Mhm. Yeah. And I think it's important that you. Teach others a little bit about, you know, if you can inspire a couple people to grow food in their gar- in their house in their apartment that have never grown food before, that's awesome. And then when you have, I was just talking to our aunt this last weekend. We went to go visit family, 
and I was talking to Aunt Cindy, and I said, it is so, isn't it so amazing, because they have gardens and stuff, too, I said, isn't it so amazing when you have all of, like, your whole dinner are things that you grew, your own potatoes, your own meat, your own salad, everything that you grew on your property, isn't that, like, yeah. really exciting? Yeah. We've had meals like that before, and, uh-huh. and you guys are like, whoa, we this had, is everything we, we grew. We had salad, and we had our own lettuce. We just had salad just recently. Mm-hmm. We had our, our indoor own garden. lettuce. We had our own arugula. Uh, arugula, which was it was really, really spicy. spicy. Yeah, yeah. There like was three throat. kind of leaves. There was two kinds of lettuce and one kind of arugula. Uh huh. But yeah. a few years, a few months ago, um, we built salad. We had cucumbers from our garden. We oh, had yeah. tomatoes from oh, our garden. Yeah. We had so much thing from our garden and yeah. our salad and. Uh, Mom said, Charred. "Uh huh, yeah." And we said, "And mom said, look at we grew this stuff, and we just loved it. We ate it all. It was yeah. super good. But we made awesome some gardens a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, it was really good. That's really awesome. It's another thing you can so you teach teaching the kids. Like uh, we were out, we were working in. Oh, it was when we had our woofers, mm-hmm. and." Uh, remember how Toby got some stinging nettle on his hand? Uh-huh. And what did you do, Emma? Um, we there's a kind of plant that heals stinging nettle. So I what's it called? It's called plantain, and we have it all around. Yeah, well, there's stinging nettle. There's you know plantain uh-huh. because they have similar. So you take the plantain leaves and you uh, smash them up, mm-hmm, and yeah. then you put it on the. You can. What do you do, Liam? Do them on in one. Sometimes yeah. you can chew them up and make kind of a spit poultice, or you can just rub it on there, and it takes yeah. a sting right out, right? Uh-huh. And so we always use that when we get our stinging nettle. And we have lots of stinging I got like here. 12 or 10, and Toby yeah. said, thanks for being my, thanks for, thanks for being there. Yep, and you helped him out. So that was one way that Emma, we taught Emma, and Emma taught our woofer. Good job, Toby. Emma. Yep. Toby. That was a good job. And often people come over and the kids are more than willing to help teach them. So I think the educating so and then when and then also when you have say a plant and it's not doing very well, maybe it's turning yellow or it's kind of stringy or whatever, you start looking at yeah. what you can do to make it better. So you start educating yourself, you start researching and learning uh-huh. and then you impl- then you implement these changes. And your plant gets more healthy. Cool. That is how you educate yourself. So you can educate the homesteader through trial and error, through research, educate other homesteaders that come over, educate children. And and if it's nice and stringy, um, Mom's Christmas cast it, cactus, cactus um, was up in the window. We have shaded windows so the light doesn't get so bright. And it was all stringy. So she looked up at some LED lights, which my dad has told you um, about it. Um, and we sticked it under, and like mm, a few weeks later, it was starting to not get stringy. It was, it's looking really good. Yeah. Huh? And that it even has little tiny buds. It wasn't too stringy, but it was kind of yellow yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It doesn't really get stringy Christmas cactus. Liam, did you want to say something? Yeah. The, the, the other these lights got is grow lights. Grow lights. That's what the LED lights are called, grow lights. Yep. So, uh, then relaxation is the next, I was thinking that, of elements of things that your homestead should provide you, and relaxation is one. So, working in a garden, tending your your indoor garden or outdoor garden has therapeutic benefits. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel more relaxed. And if you have a, a house with a yard or some acreage and you can make like a flower garden and just sit in the flower garden for a little while, it's really nice. The sights, the smells, the sounds, the the bugs, you know, you see a, a bee come in and start pollinating a flower and then go to the next flower and it always is cool. It, it puts a either a look of happiness or a look of like wonderment, I think, on people's faces. 
I read a quote that says, "What gardening is the only op- occupation that you can sneak up on someone and uh, sneak up behind them or something like that, and there'll be a smile on their face, something like that. It's very fulfilling, and it makes you feel good. Growing a homestead gives you a sense of, or having a homestead, rather, gives you a sense of taking care of the planet, of doing something good that you're not take take taking that you're giving some back um when you're talking about the flowers if it smells nice you have to de- it depends on the flower because if they're <laughs> squash flowers and you sit in there and you smell it'll smell gross do squash flowers smell gross oh, i smelled some they smell it's, gross yeah i smelled some uh tulips i think it was that my mom grew and they smelled like pepper i know isn't that weird yeah, Did that's it make crazy. It, I bet it made you sneeze. Yeah, but roses smell good. Yes, yeah. they're so, yeah, they're so pretty. So awesome. What else smells good? Would you guys remember those flowers that um, smell good? Probably. So our citrus, oh, our citrus tree is starting to have oh, little buds yeah. on it, little blossoms. We have citrus trees. We have basil. We have lime. We have thyme. All sorts. We even have rosemary. <laughs> Did you say thyme just because it rhymes with lime? No, we really do have lime. We have lime. I know, I said it. Do we have um, time? You said time, though. Not inside. Time's out in the garden. Oh, it's yeah. It's in the herb spiral. Okay. Hello, can you make flowers? Oh, I'm making a flower with your hand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, another element of the homestead is that it can be very financially viable. So, when you get one of these... So, for instance, if you were to get the Anytime Anywhere garden... You can grow vegetables for... Listen to the episode with uh, Vic Zatteray. And he talks about growing a head of lettuce for five four. cents. Three, four, five cents, something like that. Whereas it's, you know, three dollars at the, at, the, uh, at the store. So you have kind of a upfront cost, but it will definitely return a lot in, in, the, in the end. So, I mean, if you're growing things, if you have, if you're learning stuff and you're helping to teach other people, if you're finding a place that makes you happy and gives you a sense of relaxation and peace, uh, if you're taking care of the planet and in turn it's taking care of you because you're growing vegetables and you're doing it in a sustainable way, I mean, all these things are elements, I think, of a successful homestead. Now, the financially viable... The nice thing about it is often people, like, through CSAs, if you have enough land to where you can have a product, they'll have, you have opportunity to make money through CSAs, you have opportunity to sell eggs if you have chickens, you have opportunities to sell rabbits if you raise those, you know, they're all, these are opportunities to make money on the thing, because one rabbit, if you sell for $15, that's a bag of feed, and that can feed all the rabbits for... A month, if you have a small a small operation like ours. Um, so. um, this year we had over, I think, 20. Um, somewhere in the 20s or 30. But we had so many, we ran out of quick, out, out of food like fast, that. Huh? Like this, like in a snap. Like they were, it was gone. Like. When you get a lot of animals, you run out of feed really quick, huh? Yeah, we... We had a few too many rabbits, but we've uh, butchered some, and so we're back on the back on the track with just enough. So we're gonna have some be born here in about a week, I think. Yeah. No, uh, two weeks. Really. And then we're going to have a class in about a week and a half, and that will will butcher some of the, uh, the last of the rabbits that we have ready for butchering and be ready for. Our next batch of bunnies that we're going to uh-huh. have. We got a pen given to us, a rabbit hutch given to us that we're going to need to do a little bit of work on, a little repair work, and then that'll be ready to go, and we can keep rabbits in there. And it, It's a two-level one, so they can go up to the top and down the bottom. They can climb between levels. It's kind of exciting. Uh, can you guys think of any other elements for a successful um, homestead? So we also want a, a sustainable home. Homestead, you need to be good. You need to know what you're doing. 
need to stay focused, uh-huh. have goals, right? Yeah, like if your kid or someone distracts you, say, hold on, I'll be there in a minute. Yep, yep. Because you need to actually focus if you're getting on the guard. You don't want to be late. That's right. Got to get that garden going, right? Got to get that homestead. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, thanks, guys, for, for coming in. Liam, did you want to say something else? Yeah, um, and, and the rabbits hungry every day. The rabbits are always mm-hmm. hungry, huh? We, and if you want to stay focused, you have to have a list sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yep, you got that, speaking of focus, that's a good that's a good one. I always have a list in my head, and it always tells me, feed the cats, Emma, feed the cats. Yep, and you did a good job at feeding the cats. If anybody wants to come out to this homestead, here at Haven Homestead, come visit us. You can go to Woofer, USA, and sign up to be a Woofer, and you can come out and help us if you like. That's a good way to learn, right? Good way to learn we and had, help. We had four in all. Three came on one day. And one came. That's Her right. name is Mickey, and she's from B- B- Japan. Not oh, Pajan. <laughs> Japan, you're right. Yep. Japan. Japan, and one was came from Utah. No, Boston. Boston. All three came from Boston. Okay. Well, thanks, guys, for coming and visiting me and uh, recording this episode with me. Emma, would you like to say the sign out? Sure. This has been the Haven Homestead Podcast, where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.